Oh my god, I wasn't recording. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the Astrophysical Journal has calculated the number of intelligent alien civilizations across the Milky Way galaxy, coming out at around 36. This number is of course exceedingly dubious, and some may question why the study was done in the first place. Well, the calculations were made based off of the assumption that intelligent life forms on other planets in a similar way that it does to Earth. And while this is by no means considered even likely, the study has made a calculation should that be the case. The average distance between civilizations was put to be 17,000 light years. Next up is an interesting report of the first records of pterosaurs from Colombia. Three occurrences of the animal are described, fragmentations of a left mandible, bits of a wing finger, and the end of a radius. Although these fossils are not very complete, the paleontologists explain that the remarkably thin bone walls clearly show that they're from pterosaurs, and furthermore, they're most likely pterodactyloids. These findings add to the known fossil record of pterosaurs from the Lower Cretaceous, a period of time that is still quite obscure in terms of pterosaur evolution. And now over to Ben with some more paleontology news. Thanks, Doug. Also in the paleontology news this last week is a paper that has described some very interesting crocodilomorph tracks located in Lower Cretaceous rocks in Korea. They've been found to belong to the already well-known ichnogenus Batrachopus. However, what makes these tracks so unique is the fact that only imprints of the hind feet are found at the site, meaning these crocodilomorphs were bipedal. The new ichno species Batrachopus grandis has been given to them, and what's more is that these footprints even preserve detailed digital pad and skin traces, a great opportunity for paleontologists to study this integument. So a really cool discovery indeed. And finally for this week, and of course it was published just too late for Worm Week, is the description of a new genus and species of ancient annelid worm from the Cambrian of China, named Danikita tucolus. This animal was a polychaete, a bristle worm, and the fossil preserves a good deal of its anatomy, allowing paleontologists to determine that it sits in a position within the crown group of annelids, a crown group being the grouping that includes all members that are alive today, their most recent common ancestor, and all the descendants of that common ancestor. Danny Keita is now the oldest annelid known that definitely belongs to the crown group, and therefore it provides a clearer timeline of annelid evolution as well as showing how diverse these animals were even at this time in Earth's history. Really great news this week then. Back to Doug and- Thanks Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday.